Great. All right, everybody, now that you know my name. Um, so I'm going to talk about data warehouse, what a data warehouse is. And a lot of this presentation will depend on the previous presentation that Zamil gave about databases. A data warehouse is basically a very large database. This is a sort of definition that we can give to a warehouse. And these are the questions that I'll be looking at. What is a warehouse? Why it's needed? How it's different from a traditional database? Because it's relational in nature, but it has a large amount of data. How it is built? And what kind of queries can be answered using a data warehouse? Now, anybody who's taken a data warehousing or data mining course must have come across this example. Has anybody heard about this example? That there was this large this retail chain that started bundling beer and diapers together. These two products don't seem to go together, but they did some analytics and they found out that on Friday afternoon, a lot of young American males were buying these two items and they moved them together on the aisle. And this increased their sale percentage. Although this is an urban legend, this is not true, but this sort of tells you what data mining and data analytics is all about. All the products that are on the shelf in a particular uh, superstore, they are placed together because there is a high propensity that the user who's going to buy one will buy the other. And if you make it convenient for them, you can definitely increase your sales. Now this is a true story on the other hand. This is very scary. This happened in 2012, and uh, this was the news all over. They did some analytics, they had some data model, and through which they were able to identify that uh, during a certain uh, time period in, in their pregnancy, women buy certain products together, and they started sending out coupons to this young girl on uh, uh, baby-related products, caused a lot of confusion. Only later for the father to found out, uh, find out that her you know, daughter, his daughter is pregnant. So what data warehousing is, it's about asking these decision uh, high level questions of your system. Which are our most important customers? So this age, age old adage that all customers, customers always right, it's not true. Some customers are not valuable. Some customers might buy very, uh, just one product from you and would complain, call to the call center. It's better to lose that customer and concentrate on someone else who's legitimate, who's buying a lot of uh, products from you. Which customers are most likely to go to the competitors? Now this is uh, uh, analytics through which we basically look at the future behavior of the customers. So these are the kind of questions that a data warehouse can answer. However, the data is very disorganized. The information is somewhere in there. It's in web pages, it's in an ERP system, it's in a traditional database, and the challenge is to bring all that information together. How to make sure that one piece of information that's in one pile relates with the other piece of information that's in the other pile and is useful. So in short, a data warehouse is a process of transforming data into information. Uh, and it's making available to users, which in this case are the decision makers of the business, in a timely manner to make a difference. <laughs> Another definition of this is that it's a single, complete, and consistent source of data. So and that's comprised of a variety of different sources, like I mentioned, ERP, web pages, your uh, uh, point of sale, cash registers, and making it available to the end user in which they can understand. So what that means is we have to hide all the technical details from them. It has to be very easy. It's, so a lot of data warehousing is about visualization tools where they can very easily see through graphs where their sales are going. Now. Before data warehousing happened, there was a lot of other things that happened. Technologies have improved. It's very easy now, very cheap to store information. We can have gigabytes, terabytes of data, and it doesn't cost us that much. At the same time, the processing power is increasing. We have dual core, quad core processors. We have parallel computing. We have uh, farms through which we can an uh, analyze this large amount of data. So all of these technologies coming together have enabled us to do the kind of trend analysis that I've mentioned uh, before. So what are the organization's motivation towards moving to a data warehouse? No single system of records. Usually each department has its own warehouse that they're using. Uh, these multiple systems are not synchronized with each other. Uh, they need to... Uh, have there's this uh, customer relationship management tools. So what a data warehouse does is it takes information from all of these various different sources and combines it together. 
Secondly, there needs to be a separation of the operational system and the information system. So operation system helps you run your business. You go to a bank, you go to a, you withdraw money from the ADM. These kind of transactions are recorded by the operational system. On the other hand, the information system is a system that's designed to support your uh, complex queries, <coughs> prediction for sales. Uh, so this table over here sort of compares an operational system, a traditional database to a data warehouse. Uh, a database helps you run the business on a current basis. A data warehouse is for the top end users. The type of data is also very different. In a traditional database, you have very small queries. The data that's being manipulated is uh, very small. It's usually one row that's being updated. In case of a data warehouse, you could have millions of rows that are being returned. Uh, the primary users are clerks or salesperson, while for information systems you have managers who need to make these analytical decisions about the businesses. The scope is very narrow in case of a database. In the data warehouse, the scope is very broad. Design goals, volumes, all of these things change because the volume of the data changes and because the kind of queries that are being answered change. So this is just a... Um, if you design a database, you would see that uh, this is a, how a, usually a database is designed, and a data warehouse, on the other hand, is a star schema. So there are these design differences as well. So uh, Bill Inman, the sort of person who's credited with creating a data warehouse, has this definition. It's a subject-oriented, integrated, time-varying, non-volatile collection of data that is used primarily to uh, help in organizational decision making and it's also called a decision support system for that way. This picture shows what a data warehouse architecture is. You have these different sources of data. This is called ETL process. This takes 80% of the time and effort. You extract the data, you cleanse it, you transform it, you put it in one repository, and then you do all the analytics, you analyze you, uh, all the analyzing queries through which you are able to uh, f uh, find out this valuable information about your business. Now, there are a lot of ways that a data warehouse can represent information to you, but this is one way which is very, very popular and it's called multidimensional modeling. So what we have over here is we have these hierarchies of a product, region, and time, and they are in the form of a cube. Now what, the, uh, w what this does is it enables us to uh, do drill down and roll up. So what I'm talking about over here is we have milk, we have a month, and we have a region where the, they are being sold. And this is a, in, in the form of a visual aid. So what a user can do is if he's very interested in the sale of these products on a particular day of the month in a particular city of the region, what he just needs to do is he needs to select a cube and he can then go, and now here, we have a more detailed view of the data. This is the first day of March, second day of March, what the exact sale is in a particular city of that certain product. So we can drill, this is called drilling down. So we have all these measures and we are drilling down, we are going into low level details. So this was your, uh, this is your cube and you can drill down, go into details, dividing sales and you can also roll up where you can, if the sales information is in months, we can also see it on the basis of quarters or on years. And this is what makes it very easy for business users to utilize these tools. Because for them, all the technical details are not there. They can simply do this at the click of a button and there's terabyte information that's being rolled at the back end in seconds and nobody knows about this. This is so exciting. <laughs> so this is the, what is the nature of OLAP analysis? You have aggregation, total sales, percentage to total, which product is selling more, which product is selling less. These ranking queries are very important and they are usually, they are the ones that are being executed. Which product is selling more? Which are the top 10 products in a certain store in a certain region? Which are the products that are being <coughs> sold on certain dates in, uh, in our overall, all the stores that we have across so the beer and diaper example that I gave is one such example where we would do a top 10 products that sell together. And through this kind of analysis, we can find which pr uh, products are being bought along which with, uh, with which other product by the uh, customers of a 
store. So in conclusion, data warehouse works as a decision support system. It's for the high level uh, managers, decision makers. Most of the effort is done and time spent in extracting, cleaning, and loading the data. So everybody thinks about doing these analytics where they're finding these interesting patterns. 80% of the time and effort is spent building the warehouse before you can run those data mining queries. Rigorous testing and integrity of the data has to be done in data warehouse. Garbage in, garbage out. If the data is not good, if there's something wrong with the data, if we don't load the data correctly, we won't be able to perform any meaningful analysis. Finally, there is physical design aspects, trade-offs in building indexes, time-space analysis, designing of summary tables. We can pre-aggregate uh, you know, the data, and this is something that we will discuss later on once we start going into the details. So this is about it, uh, introduction of a data warehouse and what it's supposed to do and how it's built and what's the basic purpose of it. If there are any questions, no questions. All right, thank you.